welcome to another episode of My Best 11 podcast. Uh, today, um, as ever, we have Marvin Johnson over in the States, but we are joined by a man who was born on my side of the world, as I just found out, actually, um, born in um, Australia um, and has played for a number of clubs, but probably best known for playing f- um, for both Luton and Leicester as well. So today we are joined by David Oldfield. How are you, David? I'm very well. Thanks, Andrew. How are you? Yes, good. Thank you very much. Good, good. So, and how are you, Marv? I'm good. Thank you, Andrew. I'm good. Hi, Dave. How are you? Hey, Marv. Nice to see you. Very professional, Marv. Yeah. I mean, I've been up quite, well, it's half, it was midday, yeah, two o'clock here now. So, I mean, didn't want to... been up an hour. Like, yeah, exactly. Very professional. <laughs> I am. <laughs> Excellent. So um, what we like to do, um, those people who haven't listened to the podcast before, what we can do is go through formation, then the start and 11. And as we go through, um, Dave will try and give us a few clues, a few hints. And I'm sure Marv will um, guess a few and I'll guess a few um, as we work our way through. So um, what formation are you looking at, Dave? Uh, I'm going to play with a goalkeeper, definitely. Um <laughs> And so it's we're going to be um, sometimes you feel about a goalie you have to play him don't you I think it's in the laws of the game so you have to play a keeper we're going to play a one three four one two so three at the back four in midfield and somebody in the ten pocket and two strikers excellent quick, quick count oh well, I was kind of hanging on right it's, it's the one at the start that threw me <laughs> yes I've uh, yeah I like to try and I think. You have to include the keepers in your formation. Lots of people will just say three, four, one, two, whatever. But I try to include the keeper when I can. So yes. Have you had a few sookie goalkeepers in your time as manager? Uh, the goalkeepers are definitely uh, different, aren't they? They they are as crazy as the saying goes. So it is um, it it, it is a different yeah scenario with the keepers. But like I say, sometimes you'd like to, to do it without them. But uh, the laws demand that you play with somebody with a different colour shirt on, don't you? So that's. Uh, they have to play. Excellent. So we'll move straight in there whilst we're talking about goalkeepers. Who have you got in goal? Well, there were some really good keepers. Um, uh, some of my Luton experience, that early time at Luton, um, there were some fabulous keepers, the likes of Les Seeley and, and people like that. I remember my little excursion with the under-21s. There was Nigel Martin who uh, went to play... Um, a lot of games, Kevin Paul, Gavin Ward at Leicester as well. Uh, I remember being at Manchester City with Paul Cooper, who was Ipswich. brilliant back in the yeah back in the days, Marv, when Ipswich were really good. Used to save a load of penalties. He was coming to the end of his career then, but he was a brilliant goalkeeper. He wasn't the tallest, but just commanded the place and organised everybody. And was, was fantastic. But actually, um, I've gone with Dibs, Marv, Andy Dibs. Yeah. Uh, which I'm sure we'll get some shouts. Uh, he was unstoppable, unbeatable when he first came to Lut- Luton Johnson. I don't know if you remember, we couldn't beat him in training. Yeah. Yeah. He was making saves everywhere and he was absolutely fabulous in the, in the Littlewoods Cup that time. So as, as much as there was some really good kick, Ian Fuel was great. Kelvin was brilliant, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. Uh, for Luton. And uh, I remember being at Kate with Casey Keller, Marv, who's a, obviously American lad who was at uh, Millwall. Casey was brilliant right. as well. But I think I think overall, Dibs just takes it. His shot stopping ability, he'd come for a cross, it, it kick it a long way with his left foot. Not perhaps yeah. the most subtle of a strike, but uh, a big <laughs> strike. Whether he could feel it into a, yeah, into a little wing back now would be another question, but he would certainly get it turned and, 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 and hit the centre forward in the head. So yes, to start with, I'm very happy I've gone with Dibs. Andy Dibs. Mm-hmm. I have to agree with you. I mean, I've done like <clears throat> my best 11 a couple of times, a few times, and I've gone between the two of them. It's been Les a few times and it's been Andy Dibble, like you said, and I use that same sort of like information about he was unbeatable in training, literally unbeatable in training, wasn't he? Well, I, I, I don't think I've seen anything like it since then. Uh, no. we, we were kids then, Marv. Yeah. So... Oh, and we, we were lucky enough to stay in it for a little bit and play a few games. But but Dibs was literally unbeatable, wasn't he? In, the, in, he was, in training he was. and the game, you were, he was picking up saves, low saves, high saves, big saves, feet, 
uh, fingers, whatever, fingertips, whatever. He, yeah, he was uh, he was tremendous. And his potty, he, he fits that goalkeeper. Yeah, he, <laughs> he fits that goalkeeper goalkeeper yes. band really well, doesn't he? Because he's absolutely. Uh, great. There was one time I remember at Man City because I, I, I followed him from Luton to Manchester, and we were on a uh, a pre-season run back in the days when you used to run at pre-season one of the water parks around Manchester somewhere and we were doing the run and it, it was around a lake or part of it was certainly around a, a lake rather than um, it Dibs was at the back he wasn't the greatest runner he was a he was a big man wasn't he and that sort of stuff but he decided to wade through the reeds and to swim across the lake to try, as a shortcut and he, he got he got stuck couldn't get out the other side he obviously had his training kit on he, he was just couldn't get out the weeds and everybody had finished we were just giggling so much and Dibs like like the man from Atlantis just kind of got himself out, out of the lake but it was uh, that's typical Dibs though that's typical him that is him that is him if I'd have told that story Mark if I'd have told that story without saying his name you would have said oh, uh, yeah I would, have, I, would, I would have got it I would have got it it was, it was brilliant absolutely brilliant <laughs> Sorry, I'm just chuckling away myself here. <laughs> I can just imagine that. Who, who do you support, Andrew? Who's your team? Uh, Luton. Oh, okay. Andrew, sorry, Andrew grew up in Luton, Dave. Grew up in yeah, Luton. Yeah, born in Luton. Right? I only moved out here when I was 25. Oh, got it. Okay, brilliant. I mean, that, so that's, that's Luton as well, isn't it? Once once you're in there for that club, it's a, it's a very special club, isn't it? That and I blame my dad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one it is. It started off as my dad and then it ended up as a passion. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Excellent. So move to right back. Who have you gone for a right back? Well, I've got wing back. Well, kind of right back or wing what would you say? Backs. I was going to say, if you've gone, obviously you've gone three at the back, what are you going to go for? Oh, well, well it, it, shall I go centre half first or the wing? Centre half, yeah. Do centre half. Centre half, yeah. yeah. Well, in all seriousness, Marv, uh, you, you, were, you were definitely in consideration. Also, I know you, you, you're not... Not in the team, Johns, but you were the, your your service to Luton and your and your attitude and willingness and quality was a definite contender. Okay, um, I've gone for I've gone for a three at the back though. Uh, I remember playing with the likes of Colin Hendry uh, at City and Mal Mal was brilliant. Mal Donaghy was brilliant <sighs> at, at Luton and um, uh, that sort of stuff. But I've gone for on the right side, Steve Davis. Um, Steve was from my second spell back at Luton when I got, when I back, back, went back to Luton from Leicester, uh, and Stevie was just brilliant, wasn't he? He was uh, yeah. great defender, really strong in the air, brilliant feet, um, brave, uh, could organise us, led us, uh, could run, could read the game. was was a really good defender. I know that um, when we were at Luton, we were in League One or whatever we were at that time, but. Steve, Steve played much higher and, and, and had a really good career. And he's definitely uh, that right-sided centre-half um, with, with some strong contenders. The likes of, uh, like I said, uh, the mouths of this world or uh, uh, Colin Hendry, who, who, who could do anything and play for Scotland a hundred times or whatever he played for, was, was, a brilliant, was a brilliant defender. And that's exactly how he used to defend with that tenacity and that bar. So... Um, it was uh, it was good for that. On the left side, so I've got Stevie Davis on the right side. On the left side, I've got a real stalwart from Leicester. Um, I, I, when I was looking back through some of the teams I played with, it, it's really tempting to be all Luton boys, all all Luton players from that really good Luton team. Um, but are you talking about uh, Walsh? Left, I am. I'm talking about Stevie Walsh, who was who was again. A, a defender in the in the old fashioned sense of the word yeah. would, would make tackles, would head it, would be brave and honest, would, would lead by example. Had a great left foot as well. It was a brilliant left foot. Would clip into channels. Would play into midfield. Would break lines with the pocket. Uh, would head at the back post. Would 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 be a real threat uh, attacking wise as well. And actually, he played um, sort of certainly towards the end of my time at Leicester. Uh, as a centre forward too, so and, and scored a lot of goals uh, as a centre forward and scored goals, crucial goals in the cut in the promotion cup final against Derby. So, Walsh has to be in the team. Left sided as well, fits into that left foot, uh, that left sided bracket. All right, you're rubbing it in there. You can move on now. I, I was left footed, Dave. All right, thank you. Oh, you no, I was going to ask. 
I was going to ask, we've actually had a quite a few um, Leicester um, people who play in Leicester and Luton. It seems to be, ironically, Leicester, Luton and Burnley. We seem to see a bit of uh, com- um, commonality in a lot of the teams. But a lot of people have said Steve Walsh or Matty Elliott. Did you play with Matty Elliott as well? No, I was just a little bit before Matty. He, right, he, okay. came, he, he was... I, I was he was at more, Oxford before, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. I was the more Brian Little era uh, and, and Matty was more uh, sort of Mark McGee and certainly um, Martin O'Neill uh, yeah Martin O'Neill when, when they really they really got it got it going and had the really good side and um, and was winning the cups and, and getting getting trophies as well so uh, no he, he I think he would have certainly he would have certainly been a contender wouldn't he Matty but yeah but for my time Walshy was fantastic and, and, it, and he's still very important around Leicester still very important around the club and uh, and and is a is an important factor there, and I think he's uh, he was a very good player, a really good player. And mm. and centrally, you, you, Marv, you can guess who, who's going to play centrally. Um, Fozzie. Get, Fozzie. yeah, get, Fozzie gets us organised. Um, a, 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 absolutely, it was was was. I mean, what, what can you say about Steve Foster? He he was brilliant. Or, he was. Got, the, the only thing perhaps you could say against him was he tried so hard to get Mitchell and Tim just to stay in shape so he wouldn't get he wouldn't get exposed. But but he was he was so good. He he, he would head it and he would pass and and and, and organize and uh, and battle and 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 be really at the forefront of everything we did. And that was such Mark. It was such a looking back on it now. It, it, it was a real privilege to try and break through or to be around certainly around that group. Of really strong players, so uh, so Fozzie was sitting there definitely. Most definitely, I think, I and mean, then like you just said, I when I first got into the team, it was when Mal um, had a an injury of a sort of re- re- reoccurring injury. He had it for a couple of weeks, and then my first real experience was being because there was only two subs in those days, and so I was named as one of the subs at Highbury at Arsenal on the weekend for this game. That was my first game and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like that Highbury and and I'm thinking, I'm excited, but on the other hand, I'm pulling myself in case I have to go on because I'm like, <laughs> it's, it's at Arsenal now, you're playing the Arsenal. But l- I mean, luckily and thankfully for, for us that Mal got through the game, but then the following weekend, I mean, it's one of those things where the injury probably just got the better of him. I knew that he wasn't going to be playing and, and Ray said to me, oh, you're going to start at Wimbledon. Baptist in the fire, John Fash, you know, up front. So, I mean, again, it was, I mean, very exciting to play, but I mean, yeah. first league game and and as everyone knows, I mean, I do like to dribble and come forward with ball and, and unfortunately for me, that was my first game when I... I don't think I was overconfident. I mean, I don't know. It just it seemed natural for me to just to take the ball forward, but I tripped or stumbled or, or something, and they went through and scored. And as you know, um, God bless him, Les was very vocal and rightly so. Fozzie, yeah. I think knew there was a because this was in the first half. Knew that I had the rest of the game to get through, so wasn't too bad. Yeah. Was vocal as as Les was, but I mean, it was a great learning curve for me to be playing alongside. Fozzie. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Les, as a as a young player, was tricky, wasn't he? Because he was he was very vocal. But as you <laughs> as you grew and and understood the demands and what is needed and required, you you realised that Les was was the right side of that demanding line and, and needed players who could play properly around him. I remember scoring against Les in training once and he absolutely hammered me, said how lucky I was and, uh, and or he just wanted to win. He just wanted to clean. I, I was like, whoa, but he absolutely, but it, it was what it was. It just, yeah, he had a real desire. And I think Steve King, Foster really incorporates all of that, doesn't it? Absolutely. Kings, he spoke about Les, <laughs> about in the warm-up, didn't he, Andrew? He said, because he was obviously two subs in those days. And in those days, it was like one of the subs used to put balls in and Kings, he said... <laughs> Cross in and stuff. He goes to get through the warm up itself without him being as vocal and <clears throat> and volatile as he was. He said, "Marv, it was easier to play the game. Should I have to play the game? Or well, come on, 
it was easier, he said. And you can believe that. I can believe that. It's, it's interesting to hear about his son, isn't it, trying to get involved in Macclesfield and all that sort of stuff and just having that memories of, of Les is, is really fond memories and really big, sharp learning curves for us as young players. Yeah, really good. Do you remember yeah, the so Millwall game? Sorry, do you remember the sorry. Millwall game? The Millwall game? The... Away. When the game got Millwall. Off. Yeah. Me, you... And I think Kingsley, I've, I've spoken about it before. I'd never forget that. And we got beat. And I think, I don't know if you can remember, at the back post, we had, we, I think we lost 2-1. And I think Fozzie was going to head it. And I don't know, you come from nowhere and took it off his head. Do you remember it? Do you remember it, Dave? Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah I do. Yeah. And Les went absolute ballistic at Ray saying about these kids. We're not going to be doing, doing anything like this. And I've got a mortgage to pay. But it was a real world, I suppose. But I mean, it was very... Um, let's say interesting. <laughs> it, it, it was it was sharp, and it was what it was back in those days. It, it, it is what it is. It's um, it, it, it took a while to understand those demands and, uh, and what it was. But we, we also grew eventually to to making sure that we stood our ground and that we had some some semblance of of standing up for ourselves as well so it, it was it was a learning environment in that time absolutely Definitely. It was tough. yeah it was tough it was uh, it was good but it was tough yeah absolutely um awesome so what we're going to do is we're going to pause right there dave and we'll no hear a, um, a short ad break from our sponsors and then we'll come back after the break we'll hear um more from your team thank you Excellent. So we're back for part two um, with David Oldfield's My Best 11 podcast. So far, we have in goal, Andy Dibble, Steve Davis, Steve Walsh and Steve Foster. Lots of Steves. There's three Steves. I was aware of that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's the back wow. Steves. It's definitely, definitely the case. <laughs> um, so we're moving on to your uh, midfield now. So you can start on the wide men, wing backs. I don't know what they... In a, four, in a three fourth, it's a bit of a weird one, isn't it? Wing when you're not playing kind of the orthodox three. kind of five as well. It's, it's a bit Gareth Southgate-esque. It, it is. It's, um, it's been around for a long time, but it's in vogue a little bit at the moment. Um, I, I found it tough with the wing-backs. There was, uh, I mean, Mitchell and Tim, Tim Breaker and Mitchell Thomas were, were absolutely magnificent for Luton when we first got in the team. Rob Johnson was around in those times as well, and it was that they were really strong, strong combinations, um, great people, really... Uh, good quality defending, great engines and really worked well going forward as well. So none of those boys have got in the team actually, but I can't quite understand why, even though I'm choosing it. But um, it was, I've, I've gone- You sound like Marv blaming time. somebody else that even though it's your own choice. It's, <laughs> right, it, 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 it seems, uh, it, it is what it is. But on the left-hand side, I've gone for um, uh, a heavyweight left footer from that's that's in terms that's in terms of his strike not in terms of his body shape but he's got had a, such a heavy slamming left foot that would hit was he was he was he with you at city he was with me at city yes he was one of yeah. the when I think I, I might when have I left, yeah when i left luton uh, and uh, i was very lucky to have a choice between uh, two clubs came in west ham came in for me and manchester city came in and, and i went to speak to john lyle and really enjoyed and went to his house and had a really great afternoon there. And it really, I was so impressed coming out. Uh, but City were also in the frame and I went to see City and, and, and City had a really good crop of, of young players. Stevie Redmond, uh, Ian Brightwell, David White. Uh, oh, and, David, and this, who was the manager at City then? Sorry, who was uh, the manager? Who took me to City was, was a manager called, called Mel Machen. Yeah, yeah, okay. Who, uh, Bournemouth, Mel, was it Bournemouth? It was Bournemouth, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Really, really good person. Uh, calm, knew exactly what he wanted and how he wanted to play. It was good for the for the boys around. And in the end, I decided to join City, probably because of that kind of crop of of young ones, that, that young players that I could sort of hopefully slip into or, or be around. Um, and Andy Hinchcliffe is the left back. Yeah, as I was thinking. Uh, yeah. Left wing back, who, who was... Um, it was a tremendous, a good defender, brilliant with the ball, get, got forward, delivered crosses, got himself into attacking areas as well, uh, was reliable, really good lad off the bit, whatever. 
a, a good sense of humour, really enjoyed being around him and, and, and playing and that sort of stuff and, and would hit 60, 70 yard crossfield balls from left back position to right wing for David White to gallop, gallop on down the wing on and, and that sort of stuff. And it, it was it was a good time to, to be. I wasn't at City for long. It was a short spell. Uh, I got how, moved long, on how long was it there? I was there, less than a year I was there for. Howard Kendall came in um, and wanted to bring quite a few of his ex Everton boys in. Uh, and I was I was moved out for um, I went to Leicester on a swap deal. So I wasn't there for long, but that's I really enjoyed my time at City. It was a fabulous club, uh, a real eye opener to the size of the club and, 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 and how important it was around the community, which it still is. I mean, all the clubs are, but City is, is a fantastic football club for that. For that. I mean, it's, it's changed enormously, almost unrecognisably, but it still has its heart, in, its heart and roots in the, in the community, community there. And what, um, so, uh, what they did, was it Division One when, when you joined them? Man City? We, um, I joined City in, at the top end of Division 2 and West Ham were at the bottom of Division 1 a little bit and I had a fear that if I went to West Ham we may struggle and that City hopefully would, would get promoted and we managed to get promoted that year and then step back into, into League 1, uh, Division 1 at that time. So, and there was a good crop of, of young players at City. Um, and, and David White, for example, is in contention for that right-sided role. I think if it was a 4-4-2, it would have been definitely David White galloping down the wing, played for England. Unbelievable pace, really good quality, crossed a great ball. Actually, I remember um, scoring against Luton, actually. I don't know if you remember it, Marvin. Yeah, I'm uh, probably meant to be marking you. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, I would never have mentioned it if you were, Marvin. Was, 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 <laughs> no, but, but yeah, you're, talking about, you're talking about at Main Road, aren't you? It, main road, it was a diving header, yeah. which I'd never, it, I don't know where it yeah. came from. Yeah, Dave, out the blue, it was a brilliant I played in that game. I, I played in that game. Hey, was it something like four or five? Uh, I can't actually remember what the score was. I, I know Kings had played and you, you would have played. And, uh, and I, I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember got, uh, Johnson, I remember going into the dressing room and sitting next to you and, and certainly Kingsley in the away team. You won't remember, but I remember. Go and, on. Um, and it was about an hour before kickoff, maybe, maybe even a little bit closer to kickoff. And I was just just chatting because with my friends and that sort. Of, I'd only been City for like, I don't know, blue like a, a few weeks or whatever it will be. I can't quite remember. It would have been a few months, maybe. It was a catch up time. And I, and I was sitting there, and then and then the coach. It wasn't Ray. It was it was one of the coach. I can't quite remember. Who it was. He went, "Oi, what are you doing in here?" And I went, "I'm just, you know, get out." Get out. He was absolutely right. What am I doing in the in Luton's dressing room for like an hour before the game? But he said, no, out. Go on, out. You can see him afterwards if you're lucky and, and, and get out. So, uh, yeah, but... Um, a diamond header. The, it was a diamond. I got lucky that day, definitely. But on the right side uh, is another Luton player, Marv. Um, played most times at right back, but he's going to play at right wing back here. Played... Um, Played probably close to a million games in total, probably even more yeah. than you, Marv. Um, oh, various clubs. I yeah, I yeah, yeah you know. Guess, yeah, you know. guess. Yes, of course. Who is it? Is it Graham Alexander? It is. It's Greza. Yeah. It's Graham Alexander. Good guess, Marv. It was it, it, Greza again. Was in that second spell back at Luton. Was, was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> was was. A, a, a career in right back. Got forward. And tackled. Could pass tenacious, a brilliant lad, brilliant person. Um, so he's, he's done fantastically as a manager as well and I got around it, but was, was so reliable and consistent uh, and uh, tenacious as I say, and, and, and ticked all those boxes uh, that you needed from those from those areas. And it, it was a, proper, a really- A proper footballer. He's a footballer out and out footballer, one of the typical Luton player in my respect in the way how he, struck the ball and passed the ball and drift drive the ball sometimes into your as a as a fall into your feet just an all-round like you say a top top player yeah I think that's a really good point because because Luton was and has and, and, and is now the, the club is doing well again now and it's um that type of player isn't it full of energy full of quality that wants to pass the ball wants to be on the front foot wants to be aggressive in attacking and aggressive in defending too and, and Graham certainly uh, fitted those bills so so he will him and Andy Inchcliffe will play uh, in those wing back areas 
cracking players. Yeah. Both, both, of course, play for the international teams as well. Hinchcliffe only get a few yeah. games, I think, because he was obviously held back by quite a few amazing left backs in the time. Um, we went to Everton and then Graham Alexander, of course, playing a number of times for Scotland. Yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. He did. And, and, and it, 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 has to be, it has to be mentioned with Graham, the amount of games, professional games, the yeah. brilliant clubs he actually played. I mean, it's I'm not quite sure how many, but it was. Did he meet a thousand or eight hundred? Yeah, yeah, over, over a thousand. thousand he, yeah. Something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's an incredible achievement. Oh, we we had him on here. Was it two weeks ago? Was it Andrew? Two oh, weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, two weeks ago. And, and Andrew had the stats of something like what was it in the world? I said you had some. Oh. Like, he was something like he played the twenty second ever. Twenty second oh, wow. ever most appearances in the world, Dave. Have any professional footballer in the world? Yeah, that, that, well, that's that's incredible. That that is, it really, is isn't it? That's, a, that's a brilliant stat. What well, I mean, Marv, I'm, Marv is he, Marv is um twenty first. <laughs> what? Go on, I'm waiting for the punchline. No, you're twenty first ever. You made twenty first ever of I think it was of games missed from. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I, I thought he was going to say 21 good games. I thought that's what it was, but uh, that's, uh, that's not... I was right. waiting for that. 21 <laughs> Maisie runs every game or something. <laughs> so where, so in this formation, Dave, where would you where would you play? So I know you, sometimes you played centre, sometimes you played in the right. Where that's would you question. play in this formation? Or would you... I, I know some most people don't pit themselves in. This, this team, no. you were allowed to, I, I, most people don't. I, I, I agree with oh, Andrew, I think I know where he's getting at, because like, you was, I, I didn't think you was an out and out centre forward, even though you could play there, but at the same time, I thought your best spell or best games were when you were playing, coming from deep, midfield, attacking yeah. sort of a more of a midfielder sort of thing. It, 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 it's all my career is almost split in half by the times I played as a midfield player when I played as a striker. I, I, I didn't score enough goals uh, for to be an out and out striker. I didn't. Um, I, I was the one who did the running and or got around it and, and did all that work. I wasn't an out and out goal scorer. Uh, but I could also play midfield too. And I, I, I went to, I broke in the Luton team as a forward, went to City as a centre forward. Went to Leicester probably as a centre forward, but Brian Little put me back into midfield and, and I flourished there for a few seasons. Um, came, went to Millwall as a midfielder stroke striker. Came back to Luton and played mostly up front with the likes of Thorpey and, and Tony Thorpe and people like that. Went to, to Stoke and played midfield. Uh, came to Peterborough, played midfield. Went, went and finished at Oxford as a, as a midfield player. and that. So, so it was it was split. I, I'm not anywhere near this team uh, with the likes of Steve Foster and people in the team and, and the, the, the midfield boys that I've, I've, I've gone for anyway. I, I wouldn't get in there and I wouldn't get up in up front either. So it, it's almost a moot point, really. But it, it, I probably, I really liked playing as a striker, really liked playing as a forward, but probably a, a, as a centre mid, where I grew up as a centre mid. Um, it, it, it was a youth team, Marvin, John Moore and, and David Coates. Yeah, yeah, people like, who put me up front, uh, and John Moore is very influential. Was David Coates was too, but John Moore was was very influential, certainly for me, and I'm sure for you as well at that yeah, time. Yeah, definitely. That, yeah, that's how I sort of uh, ended up back into that midfield or, or centre forward role. So it, it's been yeah a, a split. Yeah. Really, yeah, so just t- talking about your your centre forward. I mean, not. I mean, we have to mention this because one, I was playing in the game as well, and. Two, not many teams go to Anfield and end up with a, a draw. And you scored the goal, wasn't it? Well, 1-1. you remember that game? Just before they played in the cup final? Was it in 88? Uh, was it? It, 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 was, it, it was in that end of... It was in the end of the 88 season because yeah. I, I managed to get an opportunity in the team after the Little, Little Woods Cup game because I think Brian's team was injured uh, or, or, or something. It was in, it was in that period of... because they. We had to catch up some games from memory. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and I managed to score at Anfield, which is, I mean, I can still remember it now. My memory is, yeah, is, is faded and, and all that sort of stuff, as everybody's is. But um, I, I can know I was very lucky to remember that goal. It was a great pass from Rob Johnson. I just managed Rob to... Johnson's a great pass, yeah. Well, 1-1. Yeah. One, one, one. And I mean... It was 1-1, uh, yeah. It was, I mean, Aldridge played and 
I think the actual goal, I'm, again, marking him. But, like, to be fair to myself, I mean, I don't think I could have got much tighter. And it was a hell of a bicycle kick he did to get the ball in. A, I'm going to have to Google it after this. Month. Yeah, Google it. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't really. I mean, I've looked at it and I'm thinking, hmm, there wasn't much more I could do. I was, I'm, like, literally that tight to him. And he's just what, like... Was it, did he get a flick on a post or was it direct cross? I don't know. It might have been a flick on actually. You got, we've got a good memory actually. Cause I know, I, 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 just, I, 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 yeah. Because for some reason, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if someone, I think it might have been Fozzy. Fozzy might have been having a go at, was Ashley, like, Ashley Grimes or was it you? I don't know. For some, I don't know. Maybe it was a flick on and someone was meant to stop the flick. I, I don't know. It might have been me. It might have been me. Um, I, ha I have seen it since since it happened, but it was a, a while ago. But um, uh, I found it yeah. weird because it, it looked I, like it, there's a, on the footage. It, I can see Fossey going like this to someone. I'm thinking, right? I mean, I couldn't get much tighter, but like I'm the one marking him. I'm thinking, what? Who's he having to go at? Who's he having to go? I just couldn't understand why he was having to go at someone. But like, like you said about him, has a. I mean, we're at Anfield, and that's the measure of the man. I mean, not many people go to Anfield. And plus, again, look and think about it. We there was like seven or eight changes. All right, myself being one of them playing, and yeah. I don't yeah. know if, if you would. I mean, you might have been another change. I mean, Richard Darby played, I think, as well, and still Fozzie was trying to drive out the get the maximum out of us to get a result of some sort at Anfield. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It'd be interesting to look back on that team and see what actually that team was and just reminding ourselves exactly what that date was. Um, but it was it's definitely a, in it's that... A Tuesday, it's a Tuesday. Um, and I think they had the cup final on the Saturday. They had the cup final against Wimbledon on the Saturday, which had been the last good of the last game of the season. It's, it's, yeah, it is the, it's the end of that season after, after Luke Mon the World's Cup. It was, because that's when I managed to get in the team a little bit. I managed to score a couple of goals that, uh, that little spell, and it was, uh, it was a good spell for me. I was lucky there, definitely. Definitely. Excellent. Um, so, moving into central midfield then, who's going to play next to that's kind of that shield? Yes. Well, I've got, um, I've got a, a kind of a three. I've got the two midfielders and a, and a ten. But I don't, I don't have a natural ten particularly. So the three would really rotate around and and, and run on and do what they've got to do. Um, getting straight to the crunch, the, the middle two uh, are both brilliant players. Uh, one is Ricky Hill, who who was as good a player I've I've ever played alongside. It, he makes Hill my was, eleven easily, easily. Yeah, makes my Ricky, Ricky, easy. Ricky Hill was different class. He, he was. I didn't really play with with um, Paul Walsh. Uh, he he kind of gone, in, but the, hit Ricky Walsh, senior. It was such a brilliant group in there. Uh, so Ricky Hill is definitely in there. There's no doubt. I remember. I remember as a 14, 13, 14 year old when I first got involved in Luton, standing on that terrace where we used to get a free ticket to stand, and I, I used to get a bus to Luton. Um, you know, you know where the terrace is at the top, Marv, and then yeah. you walk down and you walk down behind the main stand towards the dressing room. But that standing area on the right hand side where it used to be, yeah, I know. yeah, uh, uh, used to stand there. And Ricky used to just take the ball on his chest or control it or, or ping it out wide, and you could hear the thud of the ball. And the, it, it was, yeah, he, he was a fantastic footballer, could do anything, he was a really yeah. clever footballer, could be powerful and strong. Could be subtle and and, and 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 devastating in his attacking play, but it was a brilliant leap. Could head it. Uh, it was and he's a really nice guy as well, isn't he, Rick? So he's, he uh, is. And uh, I'm just, just thinking there, Dave. I mean, I I mean, me and Andrew and myself can check this. Any every player that we've had on, I'm thinking Andrew now, who's been at Luton has picked Ricky in, in their team. I think. Oh, I think I'm I wouldn't be surprised. every player that's been at Luton has picked Ricky in the team. Hold on, I'm just checking. If they've played with him, I'm talking now. Like, obviously, there's the likes of Steve Davis and Graham Alexander, yeah. but I'm thinking every player like Kingsley has, Mick has. Um, yeah. I'm trying to... Scotty Oaks did. Scotty Oaks did, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah everybody yeah. has. You have, yeah. I would. Mike, Mike, Mike Yule did. did. Yeah. yeah. Mickey Null did, yeah. I'm not. I'm not surprised. But there, yeah. there's that. 
if you were around the Luton of that time, that there was such a strong spine to that group. Uh, I mean, Danny Wilson isn't in the team. He was brilliant. Uh, yeah. David Priest was, was brilliant, wasn't he? And uh, all those all those people from that time. I didn't mention Gary Mills, who was brilliant at Leicester for me, who, who was at Forest in the European Cup that time. And um, it was some really strong players. But so what did Ricky to... provide you as a full, as a centre forward? What did you love, or why did you love Ricky in well, particular? I, I wasn't. I, I don't think I'd have played a huge amount of games with Ricky because I was a bit. Even in training, what did he do? I mean, what what but, did he? But, but I wasn't, Andrew. I wasn't good enough for, and I'm, I'm not being modest or anything. But this is a couple of stories about a couple of these players. I, I, I didn't. I wasn't. I couldn't read them. I didn't manage to to sort of subtly get on their passes and stuff. I was just trying to do my best. Whereas these boys were a, a, a street ahead. So Ricky would would pass a ball and I'd come short and he'd go long or, or something like that. So it took me a, a, a long time to, to, although by the time I'd left to Manchester City, I hadn't been in the team for that long, but um, it, it, I certainly improved quickly. And, and, and his, his quality of his pass, how he passed it the right side, his weight of pass, his encouragement is, is uh, I, I played with him at Leicester as well, actually talking about the Leicester connection, him, Ricky went to Leicester and, and, and Rob Johnson was at Leicester. I remember David Kelly was at Leicester. I remember driving up. We used to meet at Milton Keynes. Um, but Ricky, I think, was in Luton or whatever. David Kelly was perhaps down south. Rob used to come across, I think, from Bedford Way. We used to we used to meet at Milton Keynes and, and share a journey up, take turns to drive up to Leicester. And I remember going up in Ricky's... Uh, what, what car would it be? Cos Cos Cosworth. Cosworth, yeah, the yeah, RS500 Cosworth. Oh, Cosworth. Yeah. If we were ever late, we, we we would hammer it up the motorway so fast, so so fast. Well, a couple once or twice we got there, and 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 the lights, the headlights had popped out in the front. It, the, the, the the speed we were going out for little spells, and I know between whenever, just only very small spells. He's a very good driver, but just the acceleration on that car. Just, yeah. I just remember there going, whoa, sitting back in your seat, going, wow, that's uh, and that's how Ricky played. He was just. Uh, he could have been a Rolls Rolls Royce Cosworth, couldn't he, Ricky? Without yeah. <laughs> it was brilliant. Um, and the other the other one in midfield in that central area is Paul Lake. Oh um, yeah, City, really. City. I was um, I didn't give you a chance to guess him, but he was he got injured. Lake, he didn't need. Right, he did his knee. It was crucial. I think it was or something along those lines, and 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 didn't recover. It was so unfortunate. Uh, and I remember going to City. I remember seeing Paul Lake before I went there. Uh, and there was a game I watched before I signed um, where he, he, he swallowed his tongue, actually. Like, and everybody was really worried about him and he got carried off and all that sort of stuff. He, but getting to know him and getting around him, he, he was just covered the ground so quickly. What was, was so dynamic, was, was powerful and strong. Again, really good on the ball, great in the air, a, a, a big man. Uh, physical, but also really subtle as well, and, and could play anywhere. Could play centre half, centre midfield, um, centre forward, probably. Uh, and it was really, really unfortunate to get injured. Uh, a really nice guy. He's very he's still important around City now, and and those representing that era. And, and I think he, uh, I'm really pleased to have Paul Lake in the team because he, he he had to pack up so early. Was on the brink of the England team when he got injured. Uh, as a young player, the full England team, and 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 was really had so much potential, had so much to give, and it really was uh, so unlucky, so unfortunate to to have picked up his injury. Um, but I'm very ashamed. Isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I I mean, I think I mean, if you were to try to give us an opportunity to, to guess, I might have probably got him. That's how good he was, even though he didn't oh. play that many games. I I heard about him. Um, from obviously the city and like like you said he was on the brink of playing for the full England team and he was still very very young everyone was yeah, talking about yeah. Paul yeah. Lake you know so he, he, so he you mentioned him. sorry again yeah. no forgive me I'm just going to say how he covered the ground it, just how how one moment he was there and the next one it was like you're playing with three or two extra players because his ability to get around and, and get about and with really high quality I could run around. But Lakey had really high quality as well. 
Mm. So you mentioned when you went to uh, City and obviously you stayed in the, you were in the ground and watched watched the game and, and that type of thing before you signed there. And I'm a Luton fan, Mars Luton fan, so we're not going to offend um, Fat Luton here. So we're kind of asking the question ourselves. What's the difference between, um, you said mentioned a big club like uh, Man City. And I know they were yo-yo in the 80s. Luton were a much bigger club than City. Um, what's the difference? Was it walking around Main Road? Um, did you get a tour there and, and just walking around and feeling like you're walking on no. kind of sacred no. ground? Or I know they had the... No. no, I didn't. No, I didn't get that at all. Um, I, I, I got I got an immediate feeling when going to City because, like I said, it was there was a young group there that, that I was I, I was keen and, uh, and felt very lucky to go and join. Uh, what I learned really quickly uh, about, for example, Luton and Manchester City is the only real difference between the teams, uh, forgive me, between the clubs is the amount of supporters, that the passion is the same, the intensity is the same, the, 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 the love and their dedication to the club is the same. It, City have more supporters it, 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 from the Manchester area and, and how how how, like I said, how important it was to the community. We used to do, uh, I was a first team player, we were all young lads. We used to do a pantomime at Christmas for the, for the junior blues. We used to go around to the pubs and do the, 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 there were so many supporter clubs sort of sat around that Manchester area. Oh, and a lovely and area as well around Main Road. And of course, back yeah. there, Moss Side. And... <laughs> well, it's a good, but, but there were so many supporters around there and you used to go, all these places and, 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 yeah. and see the real fans as well. you, you were made to feel so welcome. Uh, yeah. But but I know that Luton fans are exactly the same as that. And and so many of the football club fans are. They have it's why we're so lucky to be involved in football because it generates that passion and and, and, and love for the game. And, and and that's a really fortunate thing to be involved in. And, and I realized that City was just a bigger club. Uh, not <laughs> Not any difference in terms of anything else. It was a, it was a not bit better, noisier. but just it, bigger. It was bigger, it, but it was it, it, the passion is the same. It, it was noisier yeah. because that huge kip hacks down the side. It was brilliant to play there. I really enjoyed playing at Main Road, the, the, the main stand there as well. And um, it, it, it was it, it was a yeah a, a really big sort of the learning curve for me quickly that the expectation level was there, even though it was a Luton was such a brilliant team, it was it was still a smaller club to Luton in terms of the uh, forgive me, a smaller club to, to City in terms of the of the size of the sport and the fan base. But it was um, it, it was a really good a, a, a time to be there. And it, I was I was sad to leave City. Uh, I was excited to join, and I was sad to leave. But I was lucky, very lucky, to have joined Leicester there, uh, the, a club that was just sort of starting to get going. Dave, you had um, that, was it um, England under twenty one cap? Was that when you was at Lute, Le Leicester or City or Lute, Luton? No, it was at Luton. Um, well, in the it, first spell or, or the second spell? Yes, in the first spell. Yeah, in the first spell. It was um, yeah. I only played them once. Um, um, we played Sweden at uh, Highfield Road, Coventry. Um, okay. We drew one each. Uh, and, and there were a few City players in that group. Uh, Inch, Inchie was there, David White was there, Ian, Ian Brightwell was there, Paul Lake would have been there, Stevie Redmond would have been there, I think. Um, I mean, Nigel Martin was in that group. Um, um, I, I had a look when, when you very kindly invited me on here, uh, what the group was. And um, uh, Steve Sedgley, I think, was there and one or two others. So it was, uh, yeah, it was around that time. That I got it. I think um, um, it was back in the day when you played for England, the 21s, and you stayed where you were. Um, that, was gonna, that, I, that, that was the reason and the question. I was thinking, like, Australia could have been literally. Well, Marv, nobody went back to Australia to play in those days. <laughs> it, 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 you couldn't imagine traveling back to Australia to play a game and then come back to England. It, it was nobody ever did, did that. So Australia right. really wasn't. Uh, wasn't particularly a factor, although I qualified and I, I was invited to, to two or three camps for Australia uh, in the years past, but I couldn't play because of this, uh, the under 21 appearance. So it was uh, at times a little bit frustrating for that because I, I, I might have been fortunate enough to play for Australia too, but um, it, is, it was what it was. And, and back in the time when I was making the decision at, 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 for the 21s, I, I didn't hesitate because like I say, nobody, nobody went back to Australia really to play. 
but also again the reasoning behind that was you knew well i said you only but like you, you it wasn't that many games it was like 39 or 30 ish games for luton and that that was your first and one and only under 21 i'm thinking that you you've sort of like would have kicked on more and gone to Man City, you've gone to Leicester and and you're probably more experienced now and you're playing, obviously you do get older and obviously, I mean, you can only pay for the 21s to a certain age, but well, I'm yes, surprised. I, I, did, I did come in at the back end of, of that age. I, I, was, I was 20, almost 21 when I played that game. So it, it, it wasn't, um, but from memory anyway, I might have to check right. the records, but... Uh, it, there wasn't. I, 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 I do wonder sometimes if there was a bit of cementing Oldfield down for England just in case, um, right? Because you could do that back in the day. But but I was also doing well, so I, I was there on merit as well. But it was. Um, I do remember. I remember my, one of my first goals for Luton was in the Simod Cup Marv at Everton. Um, as uh, as that, that was, that's my first full game and for, for the club. I mean, the, I call that probably mine, mine as well, or, or certainly Definitely. around mine. Yeah, and, and I remember I managed to score twice. Kingsley was brilliant as well. You were brilliant. And I remember the, the journalist talking to me afterwards who, who knew nothing about me at all. And all it said in the programme, uh, and I remember this, I don't remember many things, but I do remember this. All it said in the programme for the day was uh, David Oldfield, born Perth, Australia. So everybody assumed that I'd just arrived or just <laughs> come off the, the boat or the plane or whatever. And, and I was... <laughs> I was so so. It was always Australian David Oldfield from that on, from that time on, because nobody had any ideas that uh, that I've been over as, since a kid. So, um, yeah, it, it, I mean, who, who knows? But it was. Uh, I feel very lucky to have uh, to have played for for England twenty ones, and uh, even though I it did deny some opportunities to Australia, maybe going late, later on. But that's soccer. So. Yeah. yeah, it is. It is. So moving into your attacking midfielder, or you say, I know you said the three interchange. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've gone for um, a Leicester player, um, a really, really good footballer, very intelligent. Did he, did he, sorry, sorry, to interrupt you there. sorry to interrupt you there. Did he play at Luton as well? No. Oh, OK. I just wanted to rule out Gary Parker then. Gary Parker. Not I was Park, thinking, no. Park, no. Parks, is, Parks comes along kind of... Um, yeah, the Danny Wood. Well, I mean, Parks was a great player, wasn't he? He played Leicester as well, didn't he? And the all where he played. And um, and I remember I was in digs with Gary Parker when I was a kid, and it was uh, that was a learning curve in itself with Parks. I was uh, as well. What? What do you mean? You was it? What? Where? With Mrs. Well, Golf? He, he, no, I, I, he was at Mrs. Balls for a start, and I think oh. he went to Mrs. Goff's afterwards. I think Mrs. B might have just had enough, and then I had Ricky, <laughs> uh, Ricky McAvoy too. So. Um, but Miss, Mrs. B, Mrs. Ball was very important for me uh, in Points' Road at Luton. She looked after me when I was a schoolboy going in for the, the summer holidays and the holidays, and, and, and I stayed there when I became an apprentice. So I remember, I remember getting the bus. Marv, you remember, so you were Mrs. Go so just up, not just up the road, yeah. So sixty-one, um, number sixty-one, yeah. wasn't it? Was it sixty-one? Two four, yeah. out, two four out. I think it was so along along those lines. So it was a bit further down, the next stop down. But I remember, uh, yeah, I remember. Yeah, pinching, trying to afford a fillet of fish on that McKenna <laughs> at the bottom of the bottom of McKenna with Road, and then getting on the getting on those late buses, and you just got out of the shower, your, your hair was freezing on you, and, and you're trying to get on. You're having a fillet of fish before you went home for dinner. And yeah. this is me, we say, hungry? Yeah, this I'm hungry. Friendly. I was, I'm hungry. This yeah, we used to feed us. Yeah, so that was. Uh, she's lovely. I remember her. This is big. Yeah. Yeah, she's. Uh, yes, God rest her. She was. Uh, she was brilliant for us, and we kept in touch the whole way through. Um, when I left Luton, we 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 were still in touch when we, when I packed up. So uh, it, she was uh, very important. But this midfielder, though, Marv, so, so oh, not okay. Marv, but, but this midfielder right. was at Leicester Le in my early Leicester days. David Pleat took me back to Leicester uh, when he was there. Um, took me from Man City to Leicester, and there was a really good core group of professionals there. Really, um, Ali Mocklin, Paul Ramsey. Gary Mills. Um, was he? A, was he? Was it? Was it another Gary? Was he a Gary? He is. A, he is another McAllister. Gary. McAllister. Gary, McAllister. Gary, yes. Gary Mack was a tremendous footballer. Um, really, really good. Almost a, a Ricky Hill quality. Really great, great feet. Um, cleverness. Plays around the corners. Really good pictures. Knew exactly what he wanted to do before the, the ball came. 
um, could 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 pass short, could pass long, could score shots. Was another one who could drill a ball, ping a ball, yeah. with a huge amount of accuracy and power. And and you had to learn how to receive it, otherwise you get a you get a Scottish uh, turning off. Absolutely, well, but um. He, he, he went to Liverpool. I mean, let me. He went to Liverpool. And Liverpool won the title, title at Leeds. Won the title at Leeds, or was he yeah. after they won the title? Yeah, he, yeah, he did. Yeah, he he was top class player. There's no doubt. Very good player. And then he's doing well with Steven Gerrard now, isn't he? It's uh, at Rangers, and they've got they've really got that going again. Um, uh, he, he was a high class, top class footballer. There's no doubt about that. And so that so that midfield really of Paul Lake. Uh, Ricky Hill and Gary McAllister sort of rotating around that area. Uh, alternatively, Ricky uh, doing what he's doing, Paul Lake running on, getting back, Gary McAllister pulling some strings, linking with you, you could That's an exciting midfield there. I think that yeah. could uh, do a bit of a. Uh, oh, definitely. Could, could, definitely. Could and a, a, lot of the young, a lot of the younger fans will probably see Gary McAllister as more that holding midfielder, the one who sits back. But that's naturally what most players do as they get older. They. They they kind of they become that kind of holding role, the, the sitting role. Yeah. As you got later yeah. in your career, David, what 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 did you do? Did you did you come back? Did you kind of slowly go backwards as such on the pitch? No, probably backwards as a player, but not backwards in position. <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I I actually went the other way because um, I, I, by the time I was packing up, I, I could perhaps hold the ball. I, I could use the body a little bit better. My touch was okay, so, so I, I could be that sort of centre forward that you can link and try and play off uh, along those areas rather than be a a, a, a more sort of ball playing centre midfielder I, I, I was um, I tell some of the players now I, I was I, I would nick a ball as opposed to a crunching tackle I, I would try and nick it and, and drive on with it rather than all that sort of stuff but uh, and, and Gary Mack wasn't really an out and out 10 Marv Andrew he, he wasn't a really he's not a receive back foot and slip people in he was a more all rounder high quality mid central midfielder yeah uh, good energy decent legs really good feet uh, and could play in those areas so that that three getting around each other would be uh, would be good so he's not neither of them are really out and out 10 even though we have that position but to get them at a midfield three i think is uh, i'm pleased with oh beautiful and then going up front the most poignant well, question did you pick yourself I can't even. I know you said you don't think you're good enough, but it's always worth the pun. Well, n not even close. Not even close. Um, I, I didn't even think about getting me in the team. There, there, there's no, there was no doubt that I was, not so I wouldn't get in the squad or probably get in the club. But um, it, it is what it is. That's not a problem at all. I'm, I'm, I tried hard. I played a few games and, and worked as hard as I could to, to be the best we could do, uh, to best we could be. So that's really what it was. Centre forward, so that there were some really good ones. Uh, I've managed to find a little list. I mean, I played with Kerry Dixon at Millwall, Niall Quinn, Clive Allen was brilliant at City for a spell. Um, learning those little darty runs from Clive Allen, just kind of try and get out of people's eyesight and then come back in behind them was really important. Mickey Newell was a really good player. David Kelly was was fabulous at Leicester for a spell. Um, uh, I remember playing with David Speedy, um, Ewan Roberts. Uh, uh, Leicester was a real handful and a real. Oh, he was a handful, old Ewan Roberts. Really old fashioned centre forward with, with really strong in the air and worked really hard and, and, and was a great to be around him in the team and all those sort of players. Young um, young Joe Jordan, he reminded me of. He, had no, he didn't play with his teeth in, he had to take his teeth out. He had no teeth yeah. on teeth. Uh, and I'll tell you who else was brilliant at that time uh, Julian Jochum. Um, Julian was unstoppable with his pace, real power. It would hit a shot so quickly, with no no back lift, would would catch people by surprise. We've would, named a few up. there, David, and I'm guessing none of them have made it though. <laughs> You've named a they, few. They, are, they haven't. You, but you know who the two centre forwards are. That they're they're both Luton legends. They are. They're 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 both in on merit, and in terms of uh, of probably playing at the highest perhaps part of that first division back at that time both Correct. these players yeah both these players are are in are unrecognizable i mean clive allen was brilliant wasn't he and there were some really big players and then there's some other players perhaps 
not quite an international ones, but really fantastic. But these two were, were both Mickenstein, really Mickenstein-y. It's Mickenstein-y, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Brian, Brian was different class, brilliant finisher. Um, I, I, I remember watching him in training. He used to love the way he would go cold on his shots and wait for the keeper or find those areas or just so clean a finisher. And, and Big Mick, I, I, I think if Fozzy will forgive me and, prob and probably Ricky too, but, but Big Mick sort of encapsulates it, it, incorporates, especially with how well he's done now in the current Luton Town team and how, how well regarded. He, he, he kind of is almost a talisman for all of us. Mr. He, he yeah, he represents that kind of that era brilliantly and, and to still be so relevant and important now in a, in a really good Luton side um, that, uh, that the gaffer there has done, has done brilliantly to get going and, and come back in and hit the ground running again and all that sort of stuff. So, so Mick and Brian are, are definitely the two centre forwards. Um, they, they link really well together. I mean, Mick was... Mick, well, Mick was unbelievably brave. Again, I, I, could, I wasn't quite good enough to quite understand. I couldn't always get on the end of Kingsley's crosses. I couldn't, I couldn't quite read when he was going to cross because he just dropped his shoulders so quickly and would whip the ball around and around the fullback. It took me time to get onto that. Mick's cleverness with his gliding headers or his, his subtlety of his touch or his, uh, or his power or, or, or the opportunities that he should have created for me more if I was if I was clever enough to pick onto those second balls but but the, the two together was, was a really uh, a really strong combination and, and I'm uh, and definitely uh, uh, well worth uh, being in my best 11. No, I think um, not, they wouldn't get too many arguments from from me because I think both both those players would be in my um, best okay. eleven again, like you said, you got to look at the time when we played with them. It's now it, what they call the English Premier League. It's a top division when we were playing with these players, and so you'd like to think that. I mean, you, they are going to be obviously the top of the tree because you're playing in the best division in the in the country at the time. So, I mean, it'd they be hard for, to, for them to argue. So again, they play for England. They play for England, yeah. didn't they? Paul yeah. Luton. But played for England for Luton Town, and and I mean that's with, with I think Paul Walsh did as well, didn't he? And uh, maybe one or two, whatever. But I mean that's in itself is an incredible achievement, and 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 it's I, I feel very fortunate to have been around the club at that time when it was such, such a strong, um, uh, strong place to grow up, without a doubt. Yeah. Right, if you I go were, back, to, sorry, go on. John, go on, Andrew. Go on. Um, if you were a striker. Um, who would you have preferred to play with out the two of them? Who do you think would have brought the best out of you? Well, I probably played more with Mick than I did with Brian, in all honesty. Um, pr probably Mick. Brian, Brian would have... Um, Mick, Mick could create something for me and all that sort of stuff. Brian, Brian was a goal scorer and, and would, have, would have used me as a dummy and, and had a shot. Uh, yep. Rightly so. That's not a criticism, but he, he was of that ilk where he wanted to score and get. I mean, even little Steeny Mark. Mark Steen yeah. was was tremendous, wasn't he? Uh, yeah. Back in those times. So. Um, uh, I, mean, I don't actually. I, I, I disagree with you, Dave. I think if I mean, not saying that disagree that you probably had more success with Mick. I think Brian probably would have been in better because of your pace. I think, and with Steeny not being that quick. It was he wasn't, maybe. he would probably maybe yeah. drop more deeper and find those a bit like a, a, a kid Douglas and Ian Rush sort of like combination where Rush he was really quick, you're quick, and not being disrespectful to Brian, he had a great, fantastic football brain, and he would probably be the creator more so, like a Douglas, to find you running forward more. That's just, yeah, yeah. I think you're probably right. I'm, I'm thinking more of. of what my standard was at that time. <laughs> uh, right. it, 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 perhaps if, a little bit later in my career, I would, I would have definitely lived with Brian really well because I, I, I could my, my runs were better. The timing of my runs would have been better. It, they wouldn't have been just straight runs. They would have been uh, more diagonal or more across the line or, or, or more V-shaped, come short to spin in behind and that sort of stuff. And that, that would have definitely flourished with Brian because he was such a clever footballer. And, and it, it, it's, I, I, I speak to those boys rarely. I speak to Mick every now and again through the football bit. I speak to Brian every blue moon. I don't really speak to the other boys very often, right. but it's always good to catch up with the likes of Brian 
uh, and he's he's such an important player, I think, and uh, certainly around that time, and and is a really clever, clever footballer, and like you say, really good touch and, and brings people into play, but also a really good goal scorer and a and a, and a real threat. It's interesting just hearing you talk today about your time growing up at Luton it's, and always going and saying, oh, well, you wasn't this, you wasn't clever enough at all about your runs and stuff. So, I mean, it's interesting. Do you, was, do you think you wasn't coach? I mean, I mean I'm mean, i not paying disrespect no. to any of the Luton coaches, but like, I feel in a similar sort of way. I don't remember anyone saying, look, this is what you should do. And we did certain sessions, which people do today, of back four, whatever. It was more of a case where you sort of like learned by experience, basically, really, that by one, watching yourself, or two, yeah. just in the environment itself, us growing up and developing. I think, I think that's really interesting. I, I wouldn't go that far, probably, Marv. I, I didn't feel uncoached. I, I did feel, I do feel, looking back now, how, how raw I would have been. Um, so it would have been some coaching, definitely, and the experience you've just spoken about. And, 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 and trying to learn as quickly as, you, as we can. I, I know that I, I, I was a runner and I needed to run. And, and it was, um, I, I remember sort of later on in my career, when you get a bit of a sort of more of an experienced tag around you, some manager would think, actually, you need a rest now or you, 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 you need to save your leg. Or else. But whenever I rested, I was never as good. I had to, I had to try and keep going and keep working. So I don't know if it's about coaching, Mark, because there were there were some influential people there, Trevor Hartley, around it, and and, and John Moore, and, and and really some really good, as I say, David Coates before and people, and David Pleat himself was was absolutely vital in terms of how he wanted his club to be and how and to play, uh, how he insisted on the passing and, and, and getting getting that really forefront and everything we did. But I know that I was really raw, uh, and, and really that's. So when I'm saying I couldn't quite do that yet, I couldn't, that, that I've been more along those lines that 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 I, I still had so much to learn. Right. Um, it's just yeah, yeah. like it was just hearing you talk and like and Mick spoke about it. I mean, again, he had Steve, he had Fozzy in his in his team, and he said, and you mentioned it as well. Exactly what Mick said. It was a case of where it wasn't a case where Pleaty or anyone said, look, this is a back four, stay solid. It was Fozzie was saying, like you just said, stay in here, Mitchell, stay in here, Tim. He was the one who sort of like kept the reins in it. And Mick mentioned it as, as well, didn't he, Andrew? He, yeah, Mick mentioned the yeah. same thing. He Fozzie was the one who said, look, stay in here, get beside me, and then stay compact. And it was just interesting to hear you talk about, obviously, just saying about, about your rawness and stuff. I mean, again, I wasn't being disrespectful to anyone saying that we, we no, he wasn't no. coach or, I mean, I'm not saying I wasn't coach, but I mean, it was a lot of a case where I think back then, for me, maybe similar for you, we were playing with, when we got in the team, men, what looked like, well, they were grown men at the time, whereas now, it, I don't feel, you don't see these players in the team. I mean, they are men and probably at the same sort of age of when Fozzie and Mick and Healy and Steenie were, but they just look more younger than them if it's so to speak, and they're still the same age and they're men. I, don't, I just start fathoming it, you know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I it, mean was, both... it was a... Sorry, Andrew, carry on. Well, I was going to ask, I mean, both of you boys, um, you're talking about youth teams. You never went out on loan. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but neither of you ever went out on loan. Do you think that would have been something that could have helped both of you? I mean, for me, I think Dave's probably the similar, Andrew, we got into the team uh, quite early, very early. Yeah, no, and, and I'm just going. I'm going off the back of what you just said a second ago about yeah. you learned as you went. You would have, and the kind of you were chucked straight in with men, which is good in one way. But do you think going out on loan, which is what it's done these days, um, you drop down a couple of tiers. Do you think that have actually helped? And I mean, Dave, Dave's much more involved in kind of the professional side of football in England at the moment. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> Well, no, I agree with Mark. We were we were better. It was better for us to get in and around Luton Town's first team. There's no yeah. doubt about that in my mind, especially at that time. Um, I, I went on loan once from Leicester to Millwall and had a had a really good experience with uh, Mick McCarthy, uh, Millwall manager, and some really good players. I met quite a few Aussie boys there, and actually um, Dave Mitchell and Jason Van Blurk and people like that, who uh, Ali Alistair Edwards, who who were around. 
that kind of Australian scene too, which was which was really good for me. Really good to to get to meet those boys. Um, but being around, I think being around that strong, characterful Luton Town squad w- w- was as certainly as good as uh, going out alone. It, it, I think it did leave us. You, you had to sink and, or swim to a degree, but luckily that we managed to to grasp something out of that definitely. And it was a has a forgive me for repeating myself it was a team and a squad just so full of characters and experience and and, and really good footballers that I mean even the young ones like the Gary Parkers and the Tim Breakers and the, and the Mitchells and the Rob Johnsons and Ray Daniels and uh, who else is around there Marv Stacey's yeah um, who, who else would uh, forgive me if I haven't mentioned anybody but that even, even that kind of group above us were, were really good footballers, really good players. Uh, and it, it, Luton, there was a chance to get in the first team at Luton. Yeah. Wasn't there? It, yeah. It, it's, uh, that was, it's a, I think that was a, the big thing, what you've just said there. I mean, as, as young players, we, we were recognised, be it uh, David Plea, Ray Hartford, John Moore, whoever it was, that we had a part to play in going forward, even though there were men, which is, I think is a big compliment for us, the thinking that they're that we're good enough, one, and not two, feel that maybe they're not going to be ready and send us out on loan. So I mean, I they, I mean I'd rather have, have definitely have competed and sunk or swim and hopefully um I swam because obviously like I did, I mean I played a few games and ended up being captain for the how, how many, how many did, sorry to interrupt you. How many did you um, Four, I think four hundred. I think something like four hundred. Just, just three eight six or three nine six, something like that. I mean, again, looking back now, I had a load of injuries which probably held me back, especially for 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 me getting the team as young as I did. I mean, it's that's probably the only disappointing thing that I didn't get as many appearances as maybe some of those. I mean, I got a good few, mind you. I mean, but like not as many as being up in the top. Yeah, I mean, five or three or whatever of, of some of the players who I think Ricky Hill obviously played and moved on and still had more appearances at Luton and Brian, you know, come in late, I think, and then come from non-league and um, had a, like a good few appearances. And I think it's just the injuries, you know, the injuries helped Definitely. back Definitely. them not having that many injuries, I suppose. Yeah. No, definitely. I, I, I was fortunate with that. I didn't get a huge long-term injury. So I, I managed to, I, I didn't make many tackles, Marv. You obviously tackled <laughs> much more than me, mate. So, um, yes, I didn't get too many uh, touch wood of those, uh, the big ones. Yeah. Excellent. So um, you mentioned quite a few influential people there, um, Moore, Harford, um, Plate, Coates. Um, who's got, who would be your manager yeah. to, to manage this team? For this team. Um, well, D- David Pleat was obviously very influential, was, was there when we joined as apprentices, uh, was a schoolboy in apprentices, and then left and went to Tottenham. Um, uh, and, and I left Luton not long after that uh, and had my time at, at, at City. Uh, and like I said before, I wasn't at City for very long. I'm very lucky to to have had a spell at City and I wasn't at Luton for long, but I was at, at forgive me, at City for long, but I was at Leicester for four or five years or, or, or whatever it was. And David Pleat took me back to Leicester he left the club and Gordon Lee took over for a little spell. And then the manager that I have chosen uh, came in there. I've, I've got a, I've got a list of, I mean, Lenny was, Lenny Lawrence was really important when I came back to Luton. Uh, I was with Barry Fry, John Lyle, w- w- my very small time with John Lyle. I couldn't believe how I came away just thinking I'd love to play for John Lyle, how he spoke and how he sort of talked around it, that little spell. Mel Machin, Dave Sexton was the 21 manager. And I just want to throw in now, this just before I mention who is going to be the manager, how important my dad was, how important my father was, who, who, who would take me around all to the <laughs> games and would be, uh, would be always supporting there. Not always supporting me vocal. He was sometimes very tough and, uh, and, and harsh, but fair and, 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 and would, would, do his very best to keep me on those right lines and uh, he, he was very inf- influential but the manager I've chosen for this bit w- was the manager who really I feel turned around or really got Leicester going again um, 
Leicester City beforehand, the, the Birchinals and Worthingtons and, and really brilliant football club had, had struggled slightly. But when this manager came in, um, made some changes, came in with uh, a couple of really important coaches and we really started to kick on and we got to the, the championship playoff final three times in a row uh, in that time. So Little. It's Brian Little, oh, yeah. It, it, mm. Brian Little was brilliant. It was His man management was brilliant. Um, although I had a falling out with him at the end over a, over a car. It was back in the day before Bosman. So you, you could they could keep your registration and you couldn't go anywhere and all that sort of stuff. But overall, the way uh, Alan Evans and John Gregory were the coaches at Leicester at that time and, oh. and, they, and they fostered all a really... Ex-Villa, good... Liver, uh, Villa, weren't they? All ex-Villa. All ex Villa, all ex Villa. That's right. And Brian Lill and John Gregory ended up managing Villa, didn't they? They, they, they did. They both did. Yeah, yeah both I mean, of them both, done. Yeah, yeah, they both did really well there. And uh, and Alan, Alan Evans was really important at that time too. That they were really. It's the first time I'd really seen a sort of like a, from my point of view, perhaps a really important sort of trio of of management. Uh, how uh, often it was a manager and an assistant, and that's what it was. But these three were very important together. And Brian got us working really hard, really wanted us to be uh, a group and, 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 and the spirit and, and the camaraderie around that group was was really strong. Phil G was there, Ian Ormond Droid, Colin Hill, uh, Gavin Ward was brilliant. Uh, Gavin Ward is one of, a, one of my good friends. And, 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 and it seems on the one hand, such a long time ago, but on the other hand, you can still remember that feeling around the group. And it was, uh, it was a good time for, uh, to be at Leicester, uh, and, and as I said, we got to the playoff, playoff finals three times in a row. Uh, lost the first one on a, on a very dubious penalty. Uh, lost the second one four three after coming back from three down to another really dubious penalty, and then Stevie Walsh scored twice against Derby in the following year. So we we persevered and eventually got re- uh, promoted through there. So Brian Little has got the nod for that, and he's uh, yeah a very important manager there. Oh, excellent. excellent. So, oh. Dave, um, we, we normally finish um, ag- again with you being an ex Luton player. We'd like to know what is your most memorable Luton game and why? <sighs> um, most memorable Luton game. Well, I scored my only hat trick. For Luton in my second spell there um, against Preston at Kenilworth Road, that was an important game for me. Um, but but that little spell probably when I first broke into the team, um, I managed to score against Watford um, in the in the Derby game. I managed to score like you, like you kindly mentioned at Anfield. I managed to score at, at Forest. I remember at that time and. And, and, and that kind of little period. So to probably, if you're forgiving, Mark, rather than saying one, That's of right, games, no. That, that, no. that kind of that kind of little sort of six to eight games, whatever it was, at the end of that season after the after the Littlewoods Cup uh, adventure that the club had. That that that's probably my most memorable time of of that of that. This, that, that was around the Simop Cup goals and and just yeah. breaking into that breaking into that um, that group would probably would certainly be the most. Memorable time of Luton. I feeling think. like you belonged, or, or yes, or feeling like you were trying to progress. Fe- feeling like you, that there was an opportunity and, and you wanted to try and grab it and, and keep working hard. And it, the, the the plastic pitch, the artificial pitch for me at Luton was was really important. Um, you could get out there and practice or kick it against the wall. The, the gym underneath the stand was really important to all of us. Playing yeah. volleys and tennis, but remember John Moore used to smash it against the wall and they're trying to just trying to head it like John Moore, and I would come off the side of my head or flick on, or but and then and then trying it. The volley, those volley games, Mars, were brilliant, weren't they? We they, spoke they, about it the other day. So you, so you, um, Kevin Foley was on, and so he, again, similar. The, the, it made it, it made us. I actually believe that that gym underneath was the one. Like Kev explains it brilliantly. He said, like you get in there early before training, and then after training you get back, have your lunch, scoff that down, get in there again, <laughs> then come back in the afternoon after training and get back in there again. And there's, there used to be queues in their day. There used to be queues in there. It was it was it's it was 
so refreshing and, and again to hear this is what I mean this about this podcast that to have ex players on and players who I grew up with and play with and players who I've coached being Kevin Foley talk about the passion of that gym and getting over to the volley's gym. I, I mean, it, 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 it must be, uh, I'm sure it gets mentioned by everybody, but it, I mean, it was certainly important before we got there and we were in the mid eighties or wherever it was. And, it, and it, I'm sure it's still there now and, and still in, they're probably filled in the alcoves now and flattened the wall off or something or try yeah, but, probably. But playing it, remember the wall bars, you can get under the wall. Yeah, in Alcove, yeah. It's yeah. The boys. Trying, to, trying to play Gary Parker in there or whatever, or outside the boot serves on the half volley. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, important times, definitely. So so I think that little period, Mark, would be uh, the most memorable. Oh, period. brilliant. And then for those who don't know, I mean, I've been, I know I'm, I'm sure some of our listeners do know. Um, what what I mean, what are you up to at the moment? Are you, I mean, are you still involved in the game? Obviously, we spoke, I know what, I mean, what you're at and what you're doing, but just for our listeners to get an idea of what you're, well, what have you been doing and what, what you're doing now? Yeah, I, I've, I've wanted to try and stay in the game when I, when I packed up playing. Um, and I managed to be a coach. I've, I've coached um, the youth teams and the reserve co- the managers. I've been assistant manager at various places. Uh, and at the, at, at the moment, I'm in. Uh, I'm at Oxford City in Conference South, um, trying to. We're part time. The boys, the boys all have jobs, and, and their attitudes and their work is is nothing short of sensational. Really, that that they're trying so hard to to, to do all we're asking them to do. So I feel, yeah, fortunate to have um, still been involved in, in the game now and, and, and having a little spell as a manager and trying to make the decisions and trying to, to pick a team. So after being an assistant for quite a while and, and a coach, a, a development coach at previous ages, now to try and really nail it down to try and make the right decisions to win some games has, has been uh, uh, a, a really yeah, good experience for me and good, some good fun. And, and, and at Oxford City... They have uh, two owners who have the club's best interests at heart, Marv, Andrew, and, and that makes a real difference that they're trying to, to do the right thing. And we want to try and build on what's happened, the good work that's happened previously. So it's there's a little opportunity there. So I'm enjoying myself there. Good. I, I have got one more question because you've just, just talking there, just jogged my memory. And, and it's just thinking... The assistants, like Burton and then QPR, how is the connection with you and Jimmy Floyd, how did that come about, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank? I mean, for those who don't know, Jimmy Floyd was the manager at Burton and brought David as his assistant, and then when he went to QPR, he brought David along with, to QPR as his assistant. How did that happen? Well, a mutual friend, effectively, for my wife. She knew a friend who knew Jimmy, and I got to know him. A, a quite a, a few years before we, we got together from Burton. I didn't know him particularly well. We had a very important sort of meeting beforehand where Jimmy told me what he wanted to be and I told him how I wanted to be as well and we found some mutual ground there. Uh, Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank was brilliant. He was brilliant at, at Burton. He was brilliant at QPR. We, we felt a little bit unfortunate to have left when, when we did, but it, it, it happens. It's football. Um, and, and he would have... He, he would have, if I'd have played with Jimmy, he would have squeezed in this. We have to get get him in the team. But when we do in, um, I don't know, demos, demos in training, Marv. I don't know if you still do it with with your yeah, yeah. With your your players and all that sort of stuff. But I, I've got no power, zero power really. I can I can I, I could do a little demo, but it's but it's you can't. I can run in a straight line still, but can't twist and turn. and can't really kick the ball. But Jimmy would. So if I served the ball, the, the, the players would go, oh, yeah, yeah, nice, David, well done. And then Jimmy would do it and they'd go, whoa. And, and everybody would just realise what a superstar striker he absolutely was. His rocket shots from with no back lift, a bit like Julian Judge, it just was sensational. Would catch keepers out in training when he'd been packed up for, t- for however long he's been right. packed up. So it, uh, we knew each other from, uh, from through my wife, Sarah, and... Uh, uh, a mutual friend, and we we got on well from there. And unfortunately, uh, we had mean, a, a little time together. It's good. That's fan- no, 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 that's fantastic because I mean, two things stands out to me, I, and I don't know. I've never met Jimmy Floyd at a bank, but uh, ev- everyone knows of him because obviously, like you said, he was a top striker in the Premiership. I mean, 
he must have had so many different people who he could have chose from, who he played with, who he could have like brought in as an assistant. Because like that's what the game's about, you know, the, the players you play with and you grow up and you get to trust them. And then two, for him again to put himself in a little bit outside of his comfort zone, because no disrespect to Burton, that they're not a big ish club where the likes of maybe a Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank would go to. So, I mean, that yeah. speaks volumes for him. I mean, again, like I said, I think as a person. I think you're absolutely right, Marvin. I think that's a really big point. Um, it, it, there was some really good work at Burton, actually, with, with Gary Rowett previously. But Jimmy took the club on, definitely. Uh, ben Robinson was the chairman there. I think he was a very important, still is very important to that relationship. Jimmy and Ben got on really well together. So Jimmy didn't have to go through anybody else to get to the decision making and he, the maker he could really do what he wanted to do in that time and I think for Jimmy Jimmy was it had a really nice balance of superstar striker famous whatever but really good for the boys at Burton worked them really hard really loved them really looked after them tried to do everything he could for them uh, uh, and the same at Queen's Park Rangers and he was he, he was really found a really nice balance of of, of of having to sort of manage that expectation and all that sort of stuff at a club lower than obviously where he'd played. But he got promoted from League Two. He left Burton at the top of League One. And and, and I'm sure if they had a little bit more time at QPR, which is which is tricky at any football club, um, would, would do really well. And I can't wait for him to, to get back into it at some stage because he's, uh, he's a really good person and a, and a really good manager. Excellent. 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 Well, thank you so much for your time um, on My Best 11 podcast. I hope you've um, enjoyed it. Um, is there any thank message you. you want to um, give to fans of any clubs or anybody? I know you mentioned your dad and anybody like that who you'd want to thank yeah. for an opportunity yeah, fans well, wise. There's, there's too many to thank. I mean, the, all those coaches, like Marvin said, of early days at, at Luton and, and all the way through. I, I feel very fortunate to, have, to still be involved in it now uh, and, and so many important people. Um, it, it, thank you for thinking of me, Marv and Andrew, it, because it's been it's been really interesting to go back through. It's been quite difficult um, trying to remember and then go back. I mean, thank goodness for the internet; otherwise, you'd be in double trouble, wouldn't you? It's been, it's, um, it, it's been a, a really nice experience. So, thank you for thinking of that. But I mean, the fans, uh, the, the clubs, the football is brilliant, isn't it? We're so lucky to be involved in it in whichever way we are. The training with the kids, the enthusiasm the kids bring through the game. I mean, that's, they're the most important ages. Fostering that enthusiasm for the, for the children, the girls and boys who want to play the game. And I think that's, uh, that's brilliant. I think we, we are so lucky to be involved and in around uh, such a great game. No, excellent. Definitely. Well, thank you very much for your time. And that was David Oldfield's My Best 11.